Hey everyone, hope you're all doing okay. This is Rokhat and welcome to the complete guide to Yuzu emulator. In this guide you will find everything that you need to know about the emulator. I made a guide like this a couple months back but a lot of things have changed since then. Plus I want to demonstrate a few more things. There are timestamps so feel free to jump to your desired section but I do recommend watching the entire video if you want to understand this emulator in depth. So without further ado, let's get started. First introduced in January 2018, Yuzu is written in C++ which makes it extremely powerful. When the devs started this project, they already had so much experience with Nintendo's IP, more specifically Citra emulator for Nintendo 3DS. Interestingly, both projects share similar code to some extent. As we know, Switch is based on Nvidia's Tecra architecture, meaning that emulating it is gonna require some beefy specs. So the bar for minimum specs is high. There are some pretty significant optimizations being made for this MU, more about that in the next section. So there are two big projects in Yuzu's roadmap. First is Project Reaper, which is going to deliver better optimizations for CPU resulting in better performance, unlimited frame rates for specific switch titles, kernel changes, user interface quality of life changes, and enhancing the emulator's texture caching system. The change that I'm most excited about is the VRAM cache collection, which is gonna result in lower resource usage in general. That's going to be music to the ears of people like me with low-end PCs. Second is the project Hades, which is way into later implementations at this stage. Two of the pros of Hades are vastly improved performance and improved shader caching. There are also some improvements for people with Intel or AMD GPUs. I encourage you to support Yuzu and read the latest report from their blog, link is in the description. So to download the emulator, just go to yuzuemu.org and downloads. First we do need Visual C++ 2019 installed. It is always a good idea to install redistributable C++ x86, x64, 2010 to 2020. That way you won't get any dynamic link library errors. Scroll down to the web page and we can download the Yuzu emulator installer here. This is not the standalone version. It will download the required stuff, repositories and install them on your drive. In order for our Switch emulator to boot, we need a file called prod.keys. It is basically a security key in every Switch console. Legally, you need to dump this from your own console as downloading it is considered illegal. After you have access to your prod.keys, just place it in app data, roaming, yuzu, keys and it should be good to go. It is a good idea to install the Switch firmware but you can get by without installing it. For some Switch games you do need the firmware to be installed such as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. These are mostly the newer Switch games. Yuzu doesn't need title.keys because it can generate it. It doesn't support zip file for the firmware like Rio Jinx, so we're just gonna have to extract it. To do that just go to your user folder in C drive and then follow the path shown. Just extract the zip firmware files here and you should be good to go. So we've got our firmware installed. If you have done everything correctly so far, you should be able to proceed without any issues. However, a very common issue that you can encounter is the parsing firmware error. If you follow the dumping your switch firmware from your console guide from Yuzu, you shouldn't get this error unless your dump is corrupt. This error occurs if you download the prod.keys and the firmware but they are different versions. So the solution is to get the same version of the keys and the firmware. Alright now we're in the emulator and we're just gonna go over the UI. In the bottom left corner you can see OpenGL, GPU High, Dog, Bilinear, No AA. These are the attributes of the emulator that are currently enabled. So that's why they are being shown to us. If we go into file we have first option install files to NAND. So Yuzu actually has a NAND directory where you can install different files or softwares. It's just like the Switch console itself which has a NAND storage. Second, we have load file if you want to load a specific file and load folder. So these three options actually depend on how you dump your games or cartridges, whether they are in XCI or NSP files or in a bunch of decrypted contents. Depending on the dumping method, that's how you can load these files. In recent files, all the games that you recently played are gonna show up, but I haven't played any games yet, so it's empty. Load Amiibo. Amiibo is the agent where you can create a virtual avatar for yourself. Some games require that but others don't. Open Yuzu folder is gonna open the Yuzu folder exit it's going to exit 
Emulation, we have start, pause, stop, restart, configure, current game, pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna go into configure in just a little bit. View, we have full screen, single window mode, display dock, widget headers, show filter bar, show status bar, reset window size, and debugging. They're all pretty self-explanatory. Tools, we have reinitialize keys, capture, screenshot, configure task. So reinitialize keys is a pretty important one. If your keys are corrupt for some reason, you can actually reinitialize them, but you're gonna lose the auto-generated ones. And it also shows you a little prompt that says you're about to force redrive all of your keys. If you don't know what this means or what you're doing, this is a potentially destructive action. So you're gonna wanna use it as just as a last resort. So let's say you've tried everything, but your keys are still corrupt. You can actually redump them from your console, but if that doesn't work, you can reinitialize them. Only use it as a last resort. You have configured tasks, so tool assisted gameplay. You can give it scripts, it can loop scripts and enable some other task features. I don't know much about tool assisted gameplays and given the current state of the emulator, I don't think that most people are gonna be interested in tool assisted gameplay just yet. We have help, report compatibility, open mods page, open quick start guide, FAQ and about Yuzu. Pretty self-explanatory options. Okay, in configuration settings, first up we have frame rate cap which is set to 1000%. So if you don't want any cap on your frame rate, just leave it as it is. And then second option we have limit speed percentage which is 100%. So if you're debugging the game then you might want to leave it to 40% which will give you 40% of the speed. Just do some benchmarking. But we're going to leave it to 100% because we want full speed. Multi-core CPU emulation, we want all the cores that are available to us involved in the CPU emulation because it will give us more performance. Again, if you want to do debugging, you can just deselect this and it will just use one core but it will give you way less performance. Confirm exit while emulation is running, it will give you a prompt if you try to exit and uh, just to make sure that you really want to exit the emulator. Prompt for user on game boot. For every game that you boot, it's going to prompt for user if you have different users set up. Pause emulation when in the background. So if this window is inactive, it will pause the emulation. Hide mouse on inactivity. So if your mouse is idle, it's going to hide the cursor. Hotkeys are just a bunch of shortcuts that you can assign. You can clear them or re restore defaults. In UI, we have just a bunch of options regarding UI. I'm not gonna go into them, they're pretty self-explanatory and I don't have a uh, use for them, but you might do. In web, we have user web service. So if you're a Patreon supporter, this is where you will put the token. If you have a token, you can actually download Yuzu early access builds. In debug, we have a bunch of debugging options and we're not gonna go into them because they really don't have a use aside from debugging. And even in CPU, just leave them as they are. In system settings, we have language, region, time zone, sound, output mode, stereo, it's selected to stereo, we're gonna leave it as it is. Console ID, we can regenerate it for some reason if your existing console ID is not working. Custom RTC is gonna let you select time and date if you have a game that requires that. And RNG seed is a random number generator. So you can define the initial parameters and then anything that depends on random number generator, it's gonna be affected in the game. So it's pretty complicated. I'm not gonna go into that in detail now, but you can do research on it. In profiles, we have different profiles. Files. I only have one user setup, just the basic one. You can add user or remove users up to you. In network, you have network interface. I'm just going to select Wi Fi. And in file system, it's just the path to different directories. This is NAND, this is SD card. You can also select inserted as game card. So if you want the emulator to show that the game card is inserted, it's gonna emulate that. And you can select a path. Patch manager, we have dump root. Here we can see all of our dump, all of the relevant files. This is where we're gonna put our mods for any games that we might have. So we actually have a file called Yuzu Mod Downloader Executable and we can download different mods for different games and it's gonna put them in this directory and we're gonna leave the rest of the options as they are in cpu we have accuracy auto accurate unsafe so unsafe is the fastest option but it's also the glitchiest option accurate is the slowest option but it's also the most accurate option we're just gonna leave it to auto let the emulator decide depending on the circumstances and the specs let's move on to the graphic settings in api settings we have api and shader backend 
If you have a low to mid-end PC, you might want to use OpenGL. You should see if your graphics card support Vulkan API, then switch to Vulkan because it is so much faster, but OpenGL is more accurate. So if Vulkan isn't available to you or some specific games are crashing on Vulkan, then use OpenGL and vice versa. In shader backend, we have GLSL, which is the fastest method with the longest shader building time. Glasm is the slowest method with the fastest shader building time. GLSL OpenGL shader language is a mechanism for OpenGL shading. It has been through so many iterations and it is a solid option for mid-end PCs. One of the devs actually suggested that you can use Glasm to build your shaders and after that you can use GLSL to play the game. SpurV is also another mechanism for shaders. You're gonna wanna experiment with these to see which option gives you the best performance. Use Disk Pipeline Cache if you want to reuse your cache on every reboot of the emulator which you obviously want, keep this enabled. Use asynchronous GPU emulation. This one is a little bit of an experimental option. It can give you some significant performance optimizations in some games while in others it might not. General rule of thumb is if you have a high-end GPU, leave it enabled. Accelerate ASTC texture decoding. This option was added earlier this year. It uses the horsepower of your GPU to accelerate texture decoding. I would recommend keeping it enabled. Then we have NVTEC emulation. We have GPU video decoding. So if you have a low-end GPU but a high-end CPU, you might want to go with CPU video decoding which can give you performance optimizations. No video output is for debugging only. Full screen mode is borderless window or exclusive full screen. Aspect ratio is default resolution. You can select it here. I would recommend keeping it enabled to 1x because these other options can break. If you have a low-end PC, it, it might be worth trying these experimental options. These are new options that are available to us now for low-end PCs. Window adapting filter is bilinear. We're just gonna leave it to bilinear because this is the most traditional option. If you have a high-end graphics card, you can also select AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution. Sometimes it just adds computing to your emulator and doesn't give you that much of a return. So you might want to experiment with these if you have a high-end GPU. Anti-aliasing method. Again, more computation, we're not gonna bother with that, but you can if you have a high-end GPU. In advanced, we have use VSync OpenGL only, so if you get screen tearing effects, you're gonna wanna enable this, but it can take a toll on your performance. If you have a low-end PC, you might wanna switch it to normal, which is less accurate, but can give you more performance. Extreme is the most accurate option, but it is also very slow, as it says right here. It's mostly for debugging. Use VSync OpenGL only, so if you get screen tearing first, you're gonna wanna enable this but it can take a toll on your performance use asynchronous shader building so this option can give you optimizations mostly if you're playing an open world game normally we wait for our shaders to be built which takes time and it is noticeable so instead of real-time live shader building it takes an approach which is out of sync giving you less stutter this one is experimental as well so I would recommend changing it on per game basis use fast GPU time it's it's also a switch hack and leave it enabled it will force games to run at their highest native resolution. And in anti scope filtering, we have automatic. Just leave it to automatic. Audio, we have output engine, which is set to auto QBEB SDL2 null. We're just gonna leave it to auto and audio device. You can select a specific one, but I'm gonna leave it to auto for now. And here's a volume slider. We're just gonna leave it to 100%. So in controller settings, we have up to eight players and an advanced tab. If you prefer controller versatility, Yuzu got you covered and it gives you way more options than Ryujinx. First up, we have connect controller tab, which is enabled. And from the profile down below, you can actually choose which controller you want to play with. I play with keyboard and mouse, which is right next to here. In profile, we can make new profiles with different keys and different functions, delete them and save them. Modifier range. This Reddit user explains it perfectly. It is basically a dead zone tolerance range, kind of like sensitivity. In advanced tab, we can change the key colors, enable keyboard, emulate analog with keyboard input, which is gonna give you a more joystick-like experience, but with keyboard. Plus, in some games, you cannot perform certain tasks if you don't do it with a controller. So it will help you with that issue. Enable mouse panning is one of my favorite features in this emulator. You can move your mouse in any direction and your character in the game will move in that direction, kind of like PC games. And here you can adjust the sensitivity and pressure. 
and in mouse you can enable the mouse and in advanced we can configure the buttons as well. This XI input option can solve some of the problems you might have with Xbox controllers. To add our games we're just gonna double click because it says double click to add a new folder to the game list and we're just gonna go to downloads emulators it's right here and we can see all of our games in here and we're gonna go into the settings. First up we have favorite start game start game without custom configuration open save data location mode data location transferable pipeline cache so you can download some shader data and put it in pipeline cache it will give you less stutter we can remove all these things if they are your dump is corrupt for some reason dump rom fs i think they're pretty self-explanatory so let's go into properties we can see that it's update 1.1.4 and in there are general customized settings that you can do for each of your games because not all of the global settings are gonna play nice with each of your games. Now we're gonna cover patches and or mods download. Now we're just gonna go here and select open mod data location and this is our location we can put our mods here and it will show up in game. There's actually a program called use of mod downloader which is created by a member of our community. I will leave a link in the description. So this Yuzu mod downloader will download all the mods that are available for your games displayed in your Yuzu emulator. So we're just gonna close that. And now let's see if there are any mods. So we have an ultra white mod. We're just gonna extract it. Go into properties. And it's already applied. We can disable it from here or we can enable it. There is a chance that some of the mods that you want to apply might not be in the Yuzu mod downloader so you're gonna have to manually download them and place them in your mod directory. So when we use OpenGL as a renderer, it gives us way too much stutter and there's also some terrible shaking going on in the screen and not to mention all these other issues. But when we use Vulkan, it gives us optimizations and a lot more speed. The speed is 30 FPS consistent. So there we have it guys, the complete guide to Yuzu. Even with this guide, there are going to be some things that you're gonna encounter. If that happens, just drop down a comment below and I will try my best to help out. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide, thank you so much for watching, catch you guys later.